Thank you. Thank you. Once again, let's look at the book of Psalm chapter number 100. Psalm chapter 100. Psalm 100. Verse number 4. We still continue on the topic, protocol. Okay? Protocol. I'm still teaching on protocol. Protocol, 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 protocol. Psalm 100, verse number 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. You may be seated. David is probably one of the men that is in a position to teach on protocol because he is, is a man who has had a, a lot of uh, people coming to him. He has related in so many times with um, greatness. And he understands what is required when people are getting into, even into the presence of God. Tonight, I will try to be very, 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 very short. But the reason why I need to continue talking on the importance of protocol, it is simply because many of us here, you have been to several places, for one reason or the other. And you came back with a negative report. Either you were not accepted, either you didn't get what you were looking for, either you were not given passage, Either you were not granted access. But one thing is for sure, you got to the place, but you could not get access. And that is because there are procedures that are supposed to be followed. That is protocol. Stipulated procedures that are required in a given environment for you to enter. Environments are forever present. But you don't just walk into any environment. You see, when you find yourself in an environment, sometimes you were not born in that environment, but there's a way that you entered into that environment. And certainly there is always a way that you can also exit any environment. That is protocol. Entering into an environment requires certain protocols to be observed. And also even coming out of an environment, there is some requirements for you to come out of an environment. Sometimes protocol or requirements that uh, will allow you to enter into an environment are not the same in, uh, requirements for you to leave that environment. You see, in any environment that you enter, there are things that you have done, there are things that you have observed that ushers you into any environment. No matter how tight the security is, it's an environment. David is talking about entering into the... I'll come back to the environment. David is talking about entering into the presence of God. He's saying, enter his gates with thanksgiving. One thing that is outstanding to me here is a gate. There is a gate. And um, right beyond the gate, there is the presence of God. 
And David is saying, for you to enter into the presence of God, which is given freely to us, because at any time we can boldly enter into the presence of God, God would want us to be in his presence every time. But right before the presence of God, there is a gate. And every time you see a gate, it is there to secure certain things, to give security either to the people inside. A gate, the moment you see it, you know somebody is trying to be kept outside. It is there for security reasons. But this is in the presence of God where all of us are invited. But before you can enter, there is a gate. And David is giving us information on how to enter every time into the presence of God. He's saying, if you want to enter into the presence of God, you have to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Learn to thank God every time, which means you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you need to do is to thank him. That's how you enter into the presence of God. Entering into a day. Don't look at it as a day. Just look at it as the presence of God that you're entering into. You enter into your day with thanksgiving. You start your work with thanksgiving. Before you drive, you thank him even for the car. Before you eat, you thank him for the food. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It's, it's a principle. It's a code of conduct. That's the protocol if you want to enter and stay in the presence of God. Understand one thing. If praise and thanksgiving is required at the point of entry, it means that there is something also that you can do in the presence of God that will get you dismissed. The opposite of thanksgiving is complaining. If you're such a person who complains every time, you can't stay in the presence of God. Don't belong to a ministry that you always complain about. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. You have entered into a ministry that can bless you immensely, but complaining also, that's how you exit the presence of God. God doesn't like that. Even with the children of Israel, they complained, they murmured, and that... That's the reason why it took them 40 years to enter into the promised land. Though it was promised and given to them, it took them 40 years. Complaining who prolong your journey in life. Don't complain every time complaining and complaining because if it requires, you see, thanksgiving for you to enter, the moment you begin to complain, you exit the presence of God. God leaves your place. You leave even the place of God because you're complaining, 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 complaining. But understand one thing here which is very important as well. Many people, you have been rejected, you haven't been accepted in certain places that you know. Probably it is because of how you tried to enter into that environment. It wasn't according to the protocol of the place. Every environment has its own protocol. And that protocol has to be observed. Don't violate the accepted protocol in a given area. Otherwise, you'll never be granted access into that environment. People that have rejected you try to find out how you have tried to enter into their lives. Sometimes there was no thanksgiving whatsoever. There was no appreciation whatsoever. You wanted to enter through maybe back doors and so on. But every time you see, you want to be accepted in people's lives. Every person, no matter how busy they are, they have a door that can be opened for you if you know how to observe their protocol. Very simple. Very, very, very simple. There is a reason why I'm talking to you about this. It is because 
God has been blessing us every time and leading us to places where we have been rejected. Having the blessing of God upon our lives. But we are not really taught, we are not trained on how to enter into different environments. Success is a place. Failure is a place. Healing is a place. Sickness is a place. All these are environments. Marriage is an environment. There is a way that you enter into that environment called marriage and there is a way that causes you to exit quickly from that environment called marriage. There are things that you need to observe in any given environment. And what is needed for you to enter sometimes, it is not the same as what is required for you to exit. What took Joseph, what carried Joseph into the prison was different from what carried him into the palace. Every environment requires different protocol, different procedures, different requirements. Every environment every environment every environment what they what joseph did for him to be arrested it wasn't the same thing that he did for him to be released it was a different thing so you enter into environments through certain protocols and then you exit environments through certain protocols and they are different now, Jesus talks about something very important in the book of Luke chapter number 18. From the first verse, he's dealing with prayer. He's talking about prayer, saying men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then he illustrates this by giving a parable of a judge, he says there was a judge in a certain city who feared not God, neither had any regard for men. He was a judge. He didn't have the fear of the Lord and he didn't care about people. But he was a judge. To me, it's amazing how people choose certain professions. Something that you know that you'll have to be dealing with people on a daily basis and then it is again the people that you don't want to see. There are offices like that that you have tried to enter. Where you know that's the right place for me to go and they don't want to see you there. And how do you enter into that environment? And Jesus is talking about such a judge. He's a judge well trained he qualified for his job right and his 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 responsibility is to bring about justice and there was a widow in that same city listen to me in that same city there was a widow and all of us we know that god is the god of widows but there was no justice taking place on her part not because God was not present. God was present. But there are people that God has appointed and allowed to be in charge of justice. And she went to this man and she was asking him, he said, she said, please avenge me of my adversary. I have issues with my neighbor. I have issues with somebody. I don't know what it was about, but she had some issues. Now, this widow could not sleep. She could not find rest because there was an issue between her and somebody. And to make matters worse, she's a widow. The husband is not even there to help her or to protect her. Maybe it could have been something that was taken away from her. But she's realizing that I cannot fight physically. But I have to go to somebody who has been appointed. There's a protocol. If I want to have justice played on my, part, on my part, there is a protocol that I have to observe, I have to follow. So she's coming, what she's looking for is peace. And she's not going to God, she's going to a judge, a human being 
who doesn't fear God. And Jesus is talking about some people here on earth who are responsible of your peace and your justice. This is Jesus. She didn't go to God, she went to a man who doesn't even fear God. But he's placed on a position where if you bypass him, you'll never find peace. It's a protocol. She's a widow. She didn't pray to the God of the widows. She had to follow procedures. She went there and she began to knock and she said, please avenge me. Please judge this case. Please, I need my peace. And then this man could not respond. The Bible says he kept on ignoring this widow. No regard. He doesn't care. There are people like that. They don't fear God. Obviously, they won't fear you. They don't fear God. They don't care about God. They don't care about you. If they know that you, <laughs> you are carrying the God that they don't, they don't fear, they will they'll, 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 they'll put it on you. All of it, they'll put it on you. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't have regard for people. And then she kept on bothering him. She kept on bothering him. Please avenge me. Please, 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 my case, please. And Jesus said, as she kept on doing that, though this judge didn't want to execute judgment on this woman, but he said in his heart, because of her continual coming, she has now begun to weary me now. I no longer have rest. Let me deal with her case so that I can also find my peace. She's looking for peace to a point where my own peace is now being violated. I can't, I can't even sleep because of this woman. Let me wake up and let me deal with this matter. And finally, justice was granted. You understand? And Jesus is saying, if a man like that who doesn't fear God can finally give in to pressure. How about your father who is in heaven? When you keep on praying and asking him day and night, he will surely avenge you and give you the justice that you require. So what she did was the right thing. She kept on knocking on the right door. And what she was doing was the acceptable way of doing it. She kept on doing the right thing over and over and over again. Though it seemed never to work in the first instance, but she kept on doing it. Just like the story of Ruth. She is coming from Moab. Now she has gone to the kinsmen's uh, field, Boaz. And that's where she is working. She is picking um, some grains of wheat. And then Boaz is coming and saying, ah, who is that girl? And they begin to give Boaz information that this is the lady that came from Moab. Naomi brought her back after the death of uh, the two sons and so on and the husband. And she came back. <sighs> and then Boaz went a step further. He began to talk to Ruth. And he said, I've heard a lot of things about you. What I want you to do now is that when they are coming for lunch, make sure that you also come. And I've commanded the young men never to lay their hands on you. Of course, because he was also interested somehow. And then he said, I have told them also to intentionally leave some grains for you. And on top of that, because she began to cry, she fell on the ground. That's protocol as well. She, and she began to cry before Boaz. It's a way of thanking. You see, some people, the reason why, listen to me, there is a way that you need to thank those that are blessing you in life. She began to cry. She began to cry and she said, what is it, why, do, why is it that I have deserved so much favor from you? And he said, I have heard a lot of things about you. How you have remained loyal to your mother-in-law. After all that she has gone through. And you abandoned your people and you said, hey, people shall be your people. 
and her God shall be your God. That's what you said. I've had, I've gathered all that information. So I want to bless you. And may God bless you. And he, he be, Boaz began to bless it. And Boaz said, I'll, I, will, I will ask of one thing from you. Don't leave this place. Don't leave this field. Keep on working here. And then she began to work. And after work, she went back home. She was getting more than any other time. And then the mother-in-law was now, she, she's asking her, how come today you have carried so much? And she said, that man over there, he even asked me not to leave the field. And Naomi said, even myself, I will advise you the same. Don't leave such a field. Because that's the mistake that most people do. They find themselves in a place where there is favor and they quickly exit. Don't leave such a place where there is favor happening, where you can at least pick some few things here and there, where you see things happening, miracles taking place. It's a place that once you have been there, don't leave such a place. So from this place, when you go back home, maybe tomorrow you'll be traveling, maybe a week from now you'll be traveling, In any environment that you enter, look for favor. And if there is favor, in a place, favor. In the house, favor. In a transaction, favor. In anything that, you, if there is favor, don't leave such a place. Are you following this? <laughs> That was the advice. Don't leave the place. Don't leave the place. People miss it because they are not trained on what to do for them to enter into good or favorable environments. Number one. Number two, they are not trained on how to behave so that they can stay there. They are always trained on how to exit. They do things that will get them fired before they can enjoy the favor that is in the place. Somehow you will notice that people are trained to do it the wrong way every time. And there is, some, there is some kind of training that you can actually see there. Doing it the wrong way every time. Protocol is very, very important. There is a, I, there is a, a pastor. He's from another ministry. And I think it was my first time to see him. I'd heard about him, but it was my first time to see him. And I'm seeing him not because I'm really coming to see him. I was coming to see somebody that was with him. Another man of God. So I was to I'm talking to this man of God that I've come to see, but he's close to him. So during the discussions and so on, I just looked at him. I could see that he needed somebody to bless him. His life was not okay. And then I said to him, I will have to bless you with a car. And he was so happy. He was so excited. And then we left the place. And then he needed my number because of the promise I had promised. So he wasn't sure now, how are you going to deliver this car to me if, if you're not taking my... Can I have your phone number? I'm willing to give him the car, not my number, the car, not my number. I have given you the car, not my number. At any given time, you qualify for certain gifts. 
And the fact that I've given you one thing doesn't mean that you qualify for the other thing. Listen to me now. We're talking about protocol here. You see, my issue was I'd already spoken to my guys to get his number. And he had already given his number to some of my guys, but he didn't trust them. But these are the people that are working with me. And these are the people that are going to buy the car for him. And these are the people that were going to drive the car to him and head it over to him. And they went to him, they got his number. He did not trust them. He wanted my direct line. Okay, I'm not, listen to me, it's not because I don't want to give him my number, but I know maybe it, does, it doesn't even work. It's not really going to work for you. So I'm trying to make things easy for him, but he doesn't understand. So I said, no, 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 they've already taken your number, so they'll call you. So I think it was after like five days or so, nothing had happened. The car wasn't delivered as yet. I think there was a holiday or something like that during that period of time. And then he began to call, making a follow-up, which is good sometimes. <laughs> yes, there are times, because sometimes you have people that are promising you things and they don't deliver. Okay, so he's calling. He's not calling me, of course, because I didn't give him my number, so he's calling uh, my guys over there and... Anyway, finally, I had to buy the car, hand it over to him. I never received a thank you. And I kept on asking my guys, I said, you have been talking to this person. Was he happy? Was he excited? How, how did he feel about the gift? I wanted to know whether I had done something good. There was no message, there was no thank you, there was no call after the car was delivered. Which means the guy has entered into an environment. But he doesn't know what to do for him to stay there. <laughs> and the other thing that I heard, I think two months later, was that he was telling people that... Uh, I'm more anointed than him, so he needed my blessing. He even sold this car to me. That's how he, how he was telling people that. He needed my blessing. I said, my God. This guy, I saw him. He was broke. There was nothing there. I wanted to bless him. You see, some of the people that you see struggling and suffering out there, they have worked for it. They have qualified for what they are going through. You will only understand it when you begin to help them. Go and help them. Go and help them and then you will have your own lesson. You will understand why certain people are going through what they are going through. They have worked for it. Bringing them out of that situation, they would even kill you. They have worked for that place, for that environment. Now, me wanting your blessing. <laughs> Is that the case? And even the people that are being told that, and they are believing that, what kind of people are those? You wonder again. People do things that will cause them to lose their favor. You say things that will cause you to lose your next level of favor. You enjoy little favor, little favor, little favor, but you can't move from little favor to greater favor because you don't know how to exit one environment and enter into another environment. There is a protocol everywhere you go. Every time you cross the border from one nation to another nation, there is protocol that you have to go through. Somebody can bless your life where you are right now. You have been stuck in one place for years simply because you haven't known how to be appealing to a certain individual. There is a way that you can act. There is a way that you can be accepted into their environments. Yes. 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 
yes. One man of God was bothering me. He wanted me to mentor him. So he came to me. I was preaching in a certain area. So he heard that I was in the, in the area. So he came. So he found his way to me. I said, okay. I cannot discuss with you here because normally when I'm invited, I don't entertain uh, people. When I'm invited to somebody's ministry and I'm ministering there, I will not talk to anyone. If a pastor invites me to come and preach and minister in his church, I will not take anyone's number from that church. That's me. I will not communicate with any of his members at any given time. Whether I've preached there twice or three times or four times, I don't communicate with his members. I will never do that. That's me. Number two, if I'm staying in a hotel and I'm preaching in somebody's church, they cannot come to have some counseling with me and some discussions and some prayers with me in the hotel. That has never happened. It has never happened. That's how I maintain relationships. But some of the people that have been close to me, they've, they've got no clue. They've got no clue. They don't even understand anything about protocol. So it's very, very important. What I do right now, let me say I've traveled, I've gone to Mutare, ministering in our ministry in Mutare. I cannot then leave that place and go and stay somewhere, even in a hotel, and have members in his ministry there coming to me, though it is UFIC. It has never happened. I will have to let him know. I will tell the person that I will tell your pastor that you are coming to see me. Did you tell your pastor? That is protocol. So you can find out if any of your people in your church say that, ah, I've spoken to Prophet Makandiwa and so you say, okay, call him now. Let's see the number. Call him. That's when you notice that I'm talking about principles that are supposed to be observed. That's why I stay in one place where there is favor and I, I don't intend to exit it because I know what to do for me to stay there. I know what to do. So this person came. So I could not really talk to him because I was invited but he came from another ministry. He was a man of God somewhere, but things were not really working. So he came, he also attended. So he wanted to take this opportunity to talk to me. But because of my principles as well, I said, I cannot talk to, I, I knew he wasn't part of that church. But I said, still, if I'm seen talking to you now, it's, it's awkward. Let's arrange, you can come to Harare. And then I gave him the money to come to Harare. Then he came to Harare. He attended the service. And after the service, I said to my young brother here, take him to the hotel while he's done finishing other services and so on. So he took him to the hotel. And then I said, after the service, you will have to lead me to the place where you have put him. So I did everything. I think we had a service in Chitungwiza. So he took the person into the hotel. And I said, you pay for everything. And then he paid for everything. So after the service, I, dro I drove and I passed through the hotel. And I was there for close to four hours. Three hours and some minutes. I was sitting there with him talking about ministry and so on. We, 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 we addressed most of the issues that night. And before I left, I'd already put money into my envelope, which was, I think it was about $2,000 in an envelope. And then I gave it to him. I said, you can 
uh, buy some groceries, whatever you want, when you go back home. It was $2,000 in an envelope. And the following day, as he was about to check out, I think, I don't know what happened, maybe he had made the room service or something like that. So there was $75 that was needed before he could check out. So they said, you have to pay. And he started calling him. And he kept on calling and calling and calling and calling until he began to send messages that were so nasty. And he said to him, I was there when the prophet told you to pay for everything. But how come I've been waiting here? I want to check out. But these people here cannot allow me to go because there's an outstanding. I said, okay. Now he was also calling me now. So I picked his phone and said, ah, Baba, I think we are in trouble here. The guy is insulting and is angry. I said, what is happening? There is $75 that is needed. And I said to him, didn't you pay? He said, I paid for his stay. But maybe he ordered something. I'm not sure. And I told him, that's when I told him, I said, you know what? I gave this guy $2,000. And I cannot say yesterday because I left around 1 o'clock or so in the morning. Which means shop said closed already, which means he still has that money in his pocket. <laughs> and I'm wondering, what, what, $75? He's insulting him, and he showed me the messages. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm talking about what causes people to exit places of favor. <laughs> people, are, people are so, are so, are so funny. I gave audience to another man of God again. I think it was the third time he wanted to see me. So I said, I will see you. And then he came again. I said, I will see you. And then he came again the third time. He said, man of God, my issue is not too long. It's a very, very, very simple matter. I, I, don't, I don't know if I, if, if, if I, I can say that right away now because I don't want, I, don't, I know you're a busy person. It's nothing, it's not really something big. I just need just a little money because I've got some bills that are, I've got some bills, I've got some bills. So I just need just a little money, just like $5,000. I just need $5,000. <laughs> so, So he's saying, I don't want to waste your time because this matter is very small. The money that I want is very little. So I said, my brother, this is your third time. You've been trying to see me because of little money. If it is little, why not go and pay? Go and, which means already even before I can give him, he's not, he's not going to be surprised. He's expecting that. He, he deserves it. He qualifies for it. What qualifies you for my money? It's not your money. Whether I have a lot of it, it's not your money. It's my money. Yes. What's your problem with that? <laughs> little money, $5,000. You're calling it little. <laughs> and you can't sleep at home. You're bothered. What's wrong? <laughs> Which means giving that money to such kind of a person is never going to appreciate it. Because he doesn't qualify for that environment. He has never worked for it. Do you know that a person who once gave you $10 was supposed to come back and give you a $100? If you knew how to appreciate him for the $10 that he gave to you. Every person who once blessed you, he was never, he was never, you are not supposed to be given a gift once. Every person that has once blessed you is likely the same person to come and bless you again. But it is how you respond even to the little that he has done. Learn to appreciate. This is, you see, <laughs> you, 
You go to places where you think people are not allowed to enter. You see other people entering. I've seen it in many places, whether in shops or I've seen places where it's written, <laughs> do not enter. But you see certain people entering there. There is a gate, but certain people, they know how to use that same gate that is blocking you from entering. Gratitude, it's something that if you learn and you practice it, it will work miracles for you. Appreciating people around you for what they've done, for what they are doing, that's amazing. That's an amazing thing. Whether you have, you have had your meal in a hotel, how do you appreciate the waiter? Do you just leave because you've paid for it? You have a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. Some of you, you know that you like soccer. If you meet somebody who has been entertaining you for all these years, what speech have you prepared for him? He has entertained you. I'm talking about something as simple as soccer. Hello? You have been to restaurants and then you are sitting over there and you see somebody sitting across the table somewhere over there and you know this is somebody that has achieved something. What do you prepare for the person? If you are to meet such a person, what are you going to say? That's our problem that we have, especially here in Africa. Having people coming to you and appreciating you for your uniqueness. It's very, very rare. Very, very, very rare. Very rare. So learn to do that. You start with the people that are close to you. Some of the people that are close to you are even the people that have married you. You thank them for taking that risk. I told you before. <laughs> you thank everyone <laughs> that has demonstrated favor in your life. Some of you, you grew up in strange places. You have never gone there to say thank you. I've just come back to say thank you. Learn to do that. You'll be amazed. Ruth, she fell. She began to cry. She said, why? Because I don't deserve this. And he said, you deserve it because I've heard a lot of things about you, what you did. And he said, because you have decided to come under the wings of the almighty God. He said it was. God will have to bless you for what you did. Staying with that old woman, she said, I will go with you. And Naomi had nothing left, but she's, Ruth said, I will go with you. Your God, though he has allowed all these people to die around you, but your God, I still would want to have that God. And your people shall be my people. That kind of commitment. Little did she know that she was exposing herself to greater levels of favor. And the other one was left in Moab. We'd never hear about her marriage again over there. But this one pursued one. There are people that when you choose to pursue them, no matter there could be some other wrong things that you see around them. There were so many th wrong things around Naomi. But if you make up your mind to pursue certain individuals, they, they will lead you into your marriage, into another phase of your life that you would have never gotten before. People that when you, pers you, you choose environments by choosing certain people, they will carry you into their environment. Am I talking to somebody here? 
Every person here that you see carries a different environment. Every person here carries a different environment. If you want to enter into his environment, there is a way that you enter through thanksgiving. Enter his gates. Every person here has gates. You have been cheated before, right? Yeah, because you have been cheated before, now you have built a wall around yourself. You do not, no longer want people to come into your life again. Because somebody that you invited stole something from you. Now you are very careful never to allow people again to steal from you. So whoever is going to come now should act in a different way before you can open that door for you. That pe he, sh he has to act in a different way before you can open the door for him. Understand this. I'm not saying you'll have to wait until somebody gives you something for you to say thank you. No, there are people that have already given you something. Go to those people. Don't wait for another gift again to come. Otherwise, it might, it might never come. You go there, you owe them a thank you. You owe them, whether it's a doctor who once treated you, some doctors, they go an extra mile. You can actually see that he has gone beyond his duty. And once you have recovered, when some of you have never gone back again to see that same doctor and say thank you. You meet your pilot in the airport after landing and you know this is the guy that has been flying me. What do you say to him? Nothing because you have paid. <laughs> learn to say thank you tell your neighbor learn to say thank you I remember there's a guy, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what he did with that shoe because he weighs, I think, size, size nine, <laughs> and I put on 11. He, he looked at my shoe, he said, oh, oh, ha, is that a, mom, He liked my shoe like I said, okay, so what am I going to do? I had to remove my shoes. I gave my shoes to him. I said, I said, the way that you look at these shoes, I think you would want to put them, even if you are not going to wear them. Just put, I think they will make you happy. Every morning you look at them. Because <laughs> you are so excited. Ha. Ah. He's not saying I like them because I have given them to him. The shoes are on me. And he's appreciating that. <sighs> Protocol is very important. Some of you, you are forever angry. Whether it's at a, you are at a roadblock, a police officer stops you. You don't even want to greet him. You are already angry. <laughs> you are He stops you. Ask, so afternoon say afternoon afternoon. I throw one of the in the air. The other one is a good Ah. 
There are certain people that are just good. You get the, what do you lose if you greet the people? This is protocol. What do you lose if you say, how are you say? Respect the person for what he's doing. One day, even when your car is stolen, you would want them to stop every car. You would want them to stop every car. I was stopped one day, I think we had a conference, our conference, Season of the Spirit at the HICC. I was now driving out and I'd lost the card that I took when I was entering. And they said, without a card, you can't exit. I said, I'm the one who was preaching in there. They said, you, 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 we need a card. We don't even look at your face. We don't know you. We know our card. Where is your card for you to exit? I had to reverse back, go in there to look for the card. I was so angry. And she said to me, but if this car was stolen, you were going to appreciate these people for what they have done. <laughs> Protocol. Protocol. There are people that the moment you get into their environment, they get excited when they humiliate you. Will you take that to get what you want? They will humiliate you. You just get in like this, you go to the reception, they tell you, Go and sit over there, I'll call you. There is protocol in every place, and some people, they abuse it. Judges that do not fear God, nor regard for men. You'll find people like that. They are supposed to be the ones helping you. They are not interested. But how do you keep on knocking until they respond? How do you keep on persuading them until they assist you? Learn to be a nice person. Learn to be a good person. Yes. You train yourself to utter good words. To utter good words. I know of a certain pastor, I think the wife was the one driving. She got to the roadblock. Here comes a woman, a police officer. She opened the window and the police officer said, Wow, how are you, Mama? You're Skin looks good. This is the police officer. What do you use? You see, this is women to women, right? Yes. In as much as she's doing her job, but she still has time to appreciate something nice when she says, My prayer was, I hope the husband had, had said that before. That was, that was my prayer. <laughs> Because if she's hearing this for the very first time, she would rather park her car there and say, I will stay here. <laughs> Talk to me again. What do you see on me? Because all these guys around, they can't see it. Learn to appreciate everything good that you see around you and happening around you. Appreciate. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. yes. Appreciate your husband. Appreciate your wife. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, 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 mm. Learn to appreciate. <laughs> Is she sitting next to you? Have you noticed that appreciating somebody, it gives the person more energy than discouraging the person and insulting the person? You get, you get more confidence 
when you hear positive words about what you have done, you get encouraged. You feel like I would want to do it one more time. Huh. Let's, let's, let's appreciate each other. Even for a cup of coffee, appreciate people for that. Appreciate people for that. <laughs> I know it's very hard. That's why I keep on hammering on it. It's very, but you have to master it, train yourself, exercise it. Every time something goes right, look for the person responsible and appreciate. Hello? Yes. Yes. Learn to appreciate. I've seen people that have achieved a lot. Some of them are Muslims. They've achieved a lot. When I get an opportunity, I will appreciate them for their difference, what they have done. Something that is unique. This is outside of religion. Every man has achieved something in his life. Mm. Mm. I meet with big, 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 big people, maybe in the police force and so on, and I appreciate them for the peace. Here, if, if you see, in this country, really, you, you can't have robberies happening seven times, 20 times, and so on, before the thieves are caught. They have a way of dealing with that matter that doesn't take time. We complain about this and that and that and that, but that alone, who is ever going to appreciate that? Who is going to appreciate that? So, it is not good. If you really want to motivate other people to get them to do better, even for you, and produce more favor that you will enjoy, start appreciating them. Thanking them, identify, single out, highlight those things that they have done right. You talk about those things. You talk about those things. Talk about it. Talk about it. Look for those good things. Look, gather them. Talk about it. Just find a day that you talk about it and just text a message. Just text, 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 text. Oh, what's about Dura? Text a message. Huh? <laughs> I know some of you because you hate your partner, your neighbor so much, you don't even want to. The prophet today, I think, was I supposed to come today? Because what he's talking about doesn't tarry with what is happening. Listen to me. That's the solution to your problems right now. Structure a speech. Create some good statements. Go and deliver them. Some people that have done good things to you, for you, they don't even know that you appreciate it. They don't even know whether they should repeat, whether they should continue. Go and confront them and talk to them about it. You know that day. How can somebody pick you when on his way to church? You are given access into his car. He's not asking you to pay for it. And you just jump out and you're rushing into the auditorium to find a chair. <laughs> ha! If that person is ever going to carry any other person again, I am sure it will never be you. You look for a different person. Do you thank your boss for giving you a salary? Don't say, I've worked for it. How many people have worked for it and they are not getting it? Thanking your boss for giving you a Because your boss is so unique. 
This is the only person in your entire life who has committed himself to give you something on a monthly basis. It's a commitment. And the rest of the people can use you and abuse you. There is no salary for that. But this is one person who said, if you work, I will pay you. Hello? What do you say when you meet somebody coming from the restrooms and he has a badge written cleaner? Works in the house of God, but is working not really in the house of God, is working in another house. What do you say when you meet such a person? They clean up this place, they do everything for us to be comfortable. When you meet such a person, what do you say? Do you have words for such a person? No. You don't. You don't. You don't. This kind of organization, thousands and thousands upon thousands of people, we have never had one child lost. And you meet with the same people, you think they, are, they don't know what they are doing. You complain about them. You complain about the people that are behind the order that you see, the peace that we enjoy now. There are people responsible. When you meet with them, why not take them for lunch? Why not buy them a suit? Why not, why not, why not bless them for the work that they are doing? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Look at how fast we leave this place the moment we share the grace. Behold, I give you power. And already you are leaving the place like a bullet. Imagine by the time you get home, some people are still here. You sleep, some people are still here. You wake up, some people are still here. Just think about this one day. You come, you are rushing, you are late for service, and then you enter in here, there is no chair. You look, you look around, you look around, the lights are off. There is no stage. You begin to wonder. But you know these chairs cannot walk on their own. You will begin to appreciate little things that you never thought were important. But you realize how important they are when those people are no longer willing to do them on your behalf. But what do you have to say when you are given an opportunity to meet with that kind of a person who is doing all that so that you can come sit and enjoy? Hello? When you begin to appreciate even your children, whether it's during their birthday, it's not just we wish you many more, we wish you many. You, you wish that child many things more than just years. It's a moment where you have to remind the child, we are celebrating your success as a child. Remember the day we sent you to do this. You didn't quarrel with mama. You didn't argue with papa. You went straight away. You took it and you brought it. We are celebrating your obedience as a child. And, 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 and she, she's, she's surprised. You talk about the good things that she has done. Give a list of those. So she knows that, mm, so they know. Next time, she's waiting for you to send them somewhere. To send her somewhere. She's waiting. She enjoys doing that because she's, she's appreciated. You see, even God himself would want you to appreciate him. Praise him. Enter his gates with praises and thanksgiving. He will never shut that door for you if you are coming in there thanking him for what he has done. Even God himself, he will open gates for you so that you can enter into his presence. At any given time, you can walk into the presence of God because you know how to approach the gates 
of the heavens. God will open those doors for you. Not just God, any person will open his gate for you. If you come praising the person, listen, giving thanks to the person because of what he has achieved. Very, very, very important. Some of you complain about people that never visited you when you were sick in the hospital. You talk about those that didn't come. How about those that came? What did they get after you recovered? What did they get for coming? You have a register. You are marking everyone who didn't come. I'm talking about those that came. <laughs> Pastor so and so didn't come. How about Pastor so and so who came? How many services have you missed at your zone? And you want him to attend every service of yours. Sickness service, burial service. <laughs> you want him to attend everything that concerns you. How many times have you not attended and he's there. That's his own moment. That's his own service. You don't care about not coming. You don't even send a message that I'm not coming today. You come when you want to come. When you think about just, ah, today I just want to rest. You rest. Are you sure about that? These, they, they seem to be very, very little things, very small things, like $5,000. They are not little at all. These are big things. Sometimes don't just say to people, thank you, or even thanks. Thanks is not even a good word. Hmm. It's like you are in a hurry, thanks, thanks what? What is that? For what? Take time to appreciate people that have blessed you. Take time. Take time. Take time. Take time. Take time. Take time. You have to learn to do that. It's very important. There is somebody here that I bought a car for. I think it was like three, four years ago. I bought him a car. And he has been thanking me. And the last message from him arrived, I think, three days ago. From four years, he has been thanking me for the car. <laughs> so what makes you think that I will ever think about you? I would rather go to the same person again. If I think of blessing somebody, I would go after the same person again. That's how God does it. Ah, prophet, I'm just like that person. Give me, just try me, and then you will see every day I'll be texting you. No, it doesn't start with a car. I didn't start with a car on that person. Small things. Why do you get tired of thanking somebody who can change your life for good? <laughs> I'm close. That's why you see some of the people when they go for beauty contests and so on. There is a list of things that they check, they look for, and they'll be ticking one after the other. Each are gone, each are gone, each are gone. For the first time, women they feel so it's so strange to them. They've never been in an environment where there is a list of things that are noted. A list of things for the first time. She knows good, I've got the right height. She knows I've got the right smile. She now knows somebody's there to tell her that your step is the proper one. 
for the first time she has been born, I don't know, maybe 20, 80 or 30 years or what. She has never had a person telling her that the way that you walk is the most appropriate way. She has never. But she's coming from somebody who walks in carrying a newspaper every night and makes sure she's pregnant. Hello. You are making life complicated for yourselves. If you want what you have to improve, work on it. Improve it, polish it, appreciate it, talk to it, talk to it. What you have, talk to it, communicate. When you are excited in the house, show it, my brother, show it that you are excited.